Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about masking facial features on your characters and adding masks to your character's face. So masking is basically a way to make sure that a certain facial feature will not appear outside the borders of a predefined area. Now in this case we're going to be talking about two main uh, predefined areas, otherwise known as the eyeball and the face, okay? So let's take a closer look at this uh, Sandy character's uh, head here. I'm going to go into the 2D uh, face key editor here. Okay, and let's just go into, uh, let's just use this tool here um, to click and drag. And you notice that as we move to the side, notice the character's right eye will slowly disappear beyond the horizon there of the face border. Okay, as we move her further down here, as will something like the uh, face, her smile. Okay, her smile will slowly go, you can see, beyond the border of the face here. Okay, and the eyes. The nose will kind of stay in that position, but the eyes and the mouth will go beyond, all right? And the eyebrows will kind of be masked out as well, okay? Um, these eyebrows aren't masked out, and we'll talk about the difference that about that in just a sec here. Okay, I'm gonna keep my character facing forward. So like I mentioned here, there's two main areas that are masked, that, that can be masked out. Um, in the face key editor, I'm gonna to go to the transform tool here, and I'm gonna select my eye. So if I move my eye around, notice I can move it, you know, over here, I can move it everywhere like this, but if I try to move it beyond the border of the face, it will not appear beyond the border of the face. And that's because we've set a mask layer, okay, on the border of the face. So any anytime you try and bring a facial feature beyond the border of the face there, it's going to disappear, all right? Just keep that in mind. Now that's one uh, masked area that we have on a standard character's uh, face is the, is the back, is the face background, otherwise known as this layer here, just the face, okay? So if you move the face around, basically it's everything there. We'll talk about the difference in just a sec. There's also one more thing, uh, one more layer, uh, rather mask layer on uh, the standard character. And so if we go to morphs here, we can select our character's uh, eyeball, okay? The eyeballs, for example. And if we move the eyeballs, you can see they don't go beyond the border of, or if we move the irises rather, they don't go beyond the border of the eyeballs, okay? And that's because there's also a mask layer on the eyes, okay? And we'll talk more about that in a bit in uh, Photoshop. So those are two mask layers that are on your typical standard uh, character. All right, let's just default key here and bring it back to normal. And we can close this down. Now let's go ahead and uh, delete this character. I'm gonna show a simpler example to get, uh, we're gonna create our own masks in just a sec here. So let's delete that character. Let's go down to G3360 uh, spine here and we'll have this uh, winking sunflower will bring this character in. Um, and because this character, the um, border of the face is very easily defined. Now, as you can see, if I go into the face key editor, um, same kind of thing, the eyes will kind of, this character doesn't turn as far, but you can see the eyes will kind of be, uh, they, they'll disappear beyond the border of the face mask there, okay? All right, and as will the, uh, as will the eyeballs. If I take my character's eyeballs, you can see they will be, uh, can't go beyond the border of the, uh, of, or sorry, the irises can't go beyond the border of the eyeballs there. Okay, let's just default key again here, and we'll close this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this character into composer mode, all right? So this is where we do all the editing in composer mode here. And you'll notice that right off the bat, I'm gonna go over here to the layer manager, let's zoom in on the character's face, and notice that it's very conspicuous here. Things like the eyelid, uh, the light, for the, that's the, kind of like the reflection of the eye right here uh, and the left eye. All of these, if you go over to the right here under condition, they have masking enabled, okay? So the dark uh, icon here means we have masking enabled. If, it, if the icon is white, then we don't have masking enabled. Then, then they will not be masked. They will go beyond the border of the face, okay? So let's go ahead and test this theory out. Let's go over to our 360 head creator here and just go ahead and preview. Notice that Again, the eyes, the left are the right eye, and the left eye will not go beyond the border of the face. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now uh, we can, you know, uh, test that theory out a bit further. We can, you know, go to the uh, quick head turn setup here, and we can go like to, you know, this kind of extreme, like an angle of forty degrees. Obviously, a lot more, a uh, lot more of an angle. Okay, and you can see our brow, for example. If we select the brow, we can click this and it will unmask, okay? So when you unmask it, then it can go beyond the border of the face, okay? So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at the right side here. On the right side, let's maybe try to uh, um, deselect the right eye or demask the right eye eyelid, okay? Right there, and the uh, right eye, we can do the same thing. 
and you can see the result. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of aware of, of the uh, theory of masking and, and what it does. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel that for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the masking kind of uh, setup in Photoshop. If you want to create a mask for any facial features, it needs to be done currently with the Photoshop pipeline. There's no way to do it in the pro version. You need to have the pipeline version and edit the mask in uh, Photoshop. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my character and launch her up into Photoshop here. And let's just make the image scale uh, high there and launch it. Okay, head and volume one file is fine. And let's take a look at the folder structure in Photoshop here. Okay. So if you've uh, seen our previous tutorials on, on uh, the Photoshop pipeline, you'll know that uh, the head stuff, all the head items will be found under RL Talking Head. I'm going to just make all the other ones invisible here. Under RL Talking Head, I'm going to make those bones invisible. We don't need to worry about those now. And uh, RL Image, that's just the body. We don't need to worry about that. We just need to worry about the center profile. Okay, so the front facing profile for this character's head. So if we go under there, what we're going to see is we're going to see all the folders for you different facial features. And again, these folders correspond with different sprites in Cartoon Animator uh, 4. Okay, so what we're going to focus on is the face. If I twirl down the face under NS, on his face, you'll, you'll see that the face is just right here. Okay, now this is just an image. This is just the face. This is the face right here. Okay, so uh, as you may recall, when I tried to move the eyes beyond this, the border of this face, um, it would not work. Okay, let's just control Z and undo that. And that's because the face is always defined with a mask. Now you don't necessarily have to have a mask layer in the face because it will, it will, by standard, it will default use this image as the mask as well, okay? So if you only have one uh, face image, it'll automatically use it as a mask. Now, what if, for example, I want to use a different face? Well, let's go ahead and test that theory out. So what we're going to do to create another face is create another face shape. And to do that, we need to go under the uh, face group here and create another group. So let's go here and select uh, this button here and we'll just rename it to face two. Okay, face two, there we go. And I'm going to use the uh, shape tool over here. Okay, just the custom shape tool and find a shape that suits the flower, which is kind of like this flower kind of pattern right here, flower one. Okay, we'll work with that. And then let's just go ahead and click and drag and create a uh, shape that's kind of relatively the same size as our previous circle. Okay, something like that'll do, I think. And then um, the colors will be a bit dark. Let's go ahead and double click over here and uh, use something a bit, uh, let's uh, use the tool there to maybe kind of make it a little bit darker, just a little bit darker so we can tell a the difference there. Okay, press okay. And I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna press enter. Now we don't need this uh, other face uh, group right here. So what we're going to do is just delete it. Okay, delete that group. And this one here is uh, the face shape one. So what we need to do uh, for this shape is we need to rasterize it before we update it. Um, and we also need to create a mask shape as well. Okay, so we need to def define where the uh, eyes and all the facial features are going to be masked out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and right click this shape and duplicate it, or uh, duplicate the layer rather. And we'll just call this one mask. Okay. Um, and we're going to call the other one face two. And we need to rasterize them both. So let's shift select them, right click, and select rasterize layers. Okay, and this is an important part. Uh, once, we do, once we've finished rasterizing, we can go ahead and save. Now let's go ahead and do that, file save. And then back in Cartoon Animator 4, we will update with the new uh, face. Okay, so here's the new face shape right here. Uh, let's go ahead and test it out in uh, the 360 head creator mode here. And we're just going to go ahead to the uh, quick, head, uh, quick head turn setup there. And you can see that all the features are masked out. Okay. If we just go ahead and preview it. Um, oops. There we go. Okay. We have it masked out um, by that shape. Okay. So it's a totally custom shape and it looks a little bit weird, but you know, this is extreme angle that we would normally not use. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, cancel that for now. So let's try a quick example where we can see a minor difference between the area that is masked out and the actual uh, and the actual uh, face shape. So I'm going to go back into Photoshop really quickly here, and in the face two layer, I'm going to just create an effect. Uh, let's go down to effects here, and let's create a stroke effect. And with the stroke effect, I'm going to just uh, give a size of you know 21 pixels or so. 
um, make sure the position is outside, okay? So what's happening now is we're creating a stroke layer that's kind of, a, or a stroke effect rather, that's on the outside of our mask layer. So the stroke itself, the dark uh, area border right here itself, is not going to be uh, involved in the mask. It's going to mask out, all the facial features are going to mask out before they even hit that border, okay? We can change that color maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit brighter. There we go, something a bit more blended in there. Okay, press okay. And uh, again, you can choose the size, whatever you want. Well, let's do something 29, that's fine. Okay, and press okay. Uh, so that with this new uh, face to update it again, we need to right click and uh, rasterize layer style again. Okay, make sure you always rasterize and we'll go to file and save again and back into Cartoon Animator. Okay, so you can see our character has updated with the uh, new uh, border uh, stroke around the, uh, uh, around the face shape there. Let's go ahead and test that out again in the 360 head creator. Um, use our simple uh, or basic head setup here. And notice now that when we uh, preview, notice now that the, um, the facial features are being masked prior to the border, okay? So because we extended that face shape, uh, they're only going to be following the mask uh, layer in Photoshop, okay? So whatever you define as the mask, that's where the uh, the facial features are going to be cut off. That's where they're going to be masked out as they approach the border of your character's face. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and cancel this, and let's test out the, this theory on the eyes as well. So let's uh, close this down real quick, and let's go back into Photoshop and test out this theory on the eyes. So the eyes can be found. We're going to minimize the face group now. Um, the eyes can be found. Uh, let's try like the right eye for example. If we press the V hotkey and we have auto select, we can just select the uh, item right here, and it'll select the eye white. Okay, so this is the left character's left eye under the normal folder. You will find uh, the iris, the mask, and the eye white um, groups here. Okay, so the iris is this one right here. That's the iris. Um, there is also an eye white right here. That's the eye white. And the mask is also defined as the same, uh, basically identical to the eye white. And the mask is not really shown. It doesn't really need to be shown. However, say for example, if we wanted, if we wanted the mask to be a bit smaller in this case, well, what we can do is let's take the, uh, let's minimize or make the eye white layer invisible for now. Uh, make the mask layer visible. Okay. And I'm going to press control T and just transform. We're going to change the shape of the mask. Okay. Now, you may want to do this, you may not want to do it. It really depends on, uh, you know, certain scenarios. But let's say we move it, you know, into here, for example, make the eye a bit smaller. And we can keep that iris the same size and just kind of test out what happens if we do this. All right, so we just change the size of the mask. And if we go to the eye white, eye white is still going to be the same size, okay? But our mask area is going to be smaller. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a save here, and we'll test that out in uh, Cartoon Animator as well. Now you'll notice now that the uh, shape of the iris is a little bit different. And this is because we have the smaller mask area. So let's test this out. Let's go back into uh, stage mode here so we can move around the iris separately. Um, let's just zoom in on our character real quick here. And what we're gonna do is just use the uh, motion key editor there, or face key editor rather. And let's take our left uh, pupil there, click it, and we can move it around. And you can see it's restricted by the border of the new eye mask, okay? So again, you know, generally you wouldn't want to do this. It looks a little bit weird. Um, and you, you can change the color if you want of the mask uh, layer in Photoshop or in, uh, in uh, Cartoon Animator 4 just to kind of make it clear where the mask is and where the, uh, the eye white is. Now the mask layer uh, is going to be invisible when it's uh, saved into Cartoon Animator 4. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you really quick here. So you need to make sure that your mask layer is not visible, okay, when you save it out. Uh, very important uh, thing to know. Uh, make sure that's invisible and the eye white and the iris are the only ones that are showing. Okay, good stuff. And then again, just I'll save that out. So that's really about all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about uh, how to mask different facial features, create different facial features and, and you know, mask them in various ways. There's a ton of different creative combinations you can use when it comes to masking. Um, we'll have other, other tutorials on this in the future. Uh, but thanks for staying with us. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com as well as our learning center on the Cartoon Animator 4 webpage and our YouTube channel. And I hope to see you in the next video.